These are the tales and ramblings of two men, of their dream of running a successful food truck business and life. We invite you along to join Josh and Skippy on this journey. This is Monday Morning Food Truck. Well, hey, uh, welcome to episode 21. As Bert says, our uh, little podcast is legal. Yes, it is. They can, they can barely alcohol and cigarettes. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, podcast. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, of alcohol and cigarettes. <laughs> I'm dying. God, I'm tired. Um, uh, it's a, um, yeah, it was a week. It was a week. We have, we have things to talk about. We have to, we have to, we have to stay on track today. We have things to talk about. We have all kinds of new listener questions and comments, and I love it. I love it. So much to, so much to unravel. So let me go through my week last week real quick. It was okay. <laughs> you know what? Mine was okay too. <laughs> it was. It was all right. Um, we had our second. Our, second friday in a row that we were busier than the friday previous if you don't remember we did four transactions uh two weeks ago in a three-hour period this week we did five yes but yeah. a much better average ticket so oh, it was like five, five large <laughs> orders is what you're saying <laughs> or, or larger or okay or, well, good for you but so uh, yeah um I think we have, we're only going to do four more days between now and the end of the year. So two days this week, two days next week. Um, we have a catering thing this Friday, so I don't have to worry about Friday this week. And I, I think we're going to be closed next Friday on the 23rd. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to say people are taking some long weekends to get ready for holidays or doing holiday travel to family Christmases. Um, Probably. And I mean, I was the same way when I was in corporate America and we got close to the holidays, you just take extra time off. Um, to do various yeah. things, and that location is very dependent on businesses <laughs> being open yeah. um, and office staff. So, um, we'll we'll try again in January and see see how it is there. But um, yeah, as of right now, I think I think we only have four days left, and I think we're gonna take that last week in between Christmas and New Year's just off. Um, I'm gonna get your event stuff done. I get caught up on all that stuff and reports and all that to send out to my my other partial owners and do the proper things you have to be a secretary for a week yeah this uh pile of receipts that i have here um uh, that i haven't done anything with since i don't know ooh. september well it's not that bad <laughs> needs to be entered um well for those of you that are ocd i'm not gonna be able to see it because my background but um yeah it's a it makes me have a near panic attack every time I look at it. So I do what anybody, any of a good person does and just ignores it. So of course, yeah, of course. So there's, that was my week. It was okay. Um, it was okay. Well, Paying some bills. Yeah. So our, uh, we, uh, we did a, a half day, like a lunch service on Wednesday and then a full service on Thursday. Um, Full service is honestly probably the way for us to go. Uh, we did more transactions and bigger amounts, you know, overall transactions in the uh, two to six o'clock hour. Keep talking. I can hear you. Oh, well, he's left. No, I was just, it sounded like uh, I had knocking on the, the slider door. I thought the dog was asking to be let out, but the door's open. So oh. I don't know what the hell they're doing. You haven't invested in that doggy door yet? <laughs> not yet getting close anyway, to it so and then uh yeah so we did a lot of I mean, good amount of transactions thursday definitely was our best day yet out at that location and then friday came <laughs> and <laughs> friday went friday came and friday went you I, were uh, very busy no no not whatsoever did not even set the same up. as me then because I trusted uh, our local weatherman. And, of course, what happens when you trust the weatherman, you get uh, burned. So, All right. Now I remember. I remember seeing your post, and I was going to I was gonna comment, but I thought I'd pull back the reins a little bit. Save uh, it for today when I can I can rip you properly. Well, see. You big wuss. 
I mean, at the end of the day, that's pretty much what it was. Yeah, it was was me being a large, uh, oversized wuss. Um, yeah, uh, I, I kind of wish I would have gone out because it was supposed to start at like noon, one o'clock, mm-hmm. and didn't start till like five or six. Yeah, it started a little bit later here. I mean, it wasn't supposed to start until noon here, so I'm surprised that you guys had the same forecast. But it was only supposed to be one to two inches. Yeah. We got, it, was, it was actually, it came down fast, and then it stopped, I don't know, stopped probably seven, but it was very thick, wet, uh, well, it sounded dirty, thick, wet, and, uh, and slippery. So my wife had to drive back from here back to where she's at. So that took, literally took her, I think she left at 6.30 and got there by 8.30. That was probably an hour drive. So We so did have a, a few hour period where the roads were crap. Um, and I'm glad that I wasn't pulling the trailer during that. But um, well, That's kind of where I was thinking. So if I would have stayed until then, yeah, I, back roads don't get plowed over here very often. That's yeah. pretty much my route there. So yeah, it is what it is. I think this week we're supposed to have rain on it was Thursday night and Friday morning or Wednesday night, Thursday morning, something like that. So I think we're still going to set up. Actually, I have a pretty busy week this week, five days. What the hell, man? Where do you go? I know. Yeah, it was, sucks, though, is the last day is at a high school in uh, West Bloomfield, which is an hour and 20 minutes away, for a little uh, school event that promises to be big enough because they say they have four food trucks and over 1,000 people attending. So for a two-hour period, five to seven. Wow. so and then i got a little uh a little vendor market on saturday and then our normal spots thursday or wednesday thursday friday nice and then i'm probably gonna do what you're doing what uh what you're doing we're gonna have to figure out we want to take the wife on a vacation because we both deserve it at some point or another i haven't had a vacation in many years so yeah so that's uh that was my week and upcoming awesome yeah yeah, can't shake this cough though. It's killing me. Um, you're not alone. Pam, Pam still has hers from the day before Thanksgiving. Her scratchy yeah. throat and the cough, and she said she gave it to her husband. So, um, <sighs> yeah, I'm t- they're so giving, aren't they? Aren't they though? Give and give and give. Yeah, they give all the bad stuff. Take all the good stuff. I would uh, never. Mind. Um, yeah, so. Uh, I saw that we had, uh, I know I shared the, uh, we had a lot of people ask in various Facebook groups about how to do this, that, and the other thing. And I think both of us posted the, or shared the food truck podcast. So I'm hoping we got some listeners from that. Uh, you said we have questions. I love questions. Um, well, we had one, you had one about pricing. Someone was hoping that we Probably. Discuss pricing menu, mm-hmm. skim through a few episodes. Well, stop skimming. Listen to the whole thing. Yeah, yeah don't skim. You're, you're missing out on laughter. Yeah. Laughter. And I'm pretty sure we have kind of gone over a little bit of pricing and, and menu, uh, but we can dip it, uh, delve into that a little bit more. And then on YouTube, sorry, I'm not pulling names. I'm too tired. Um, someone asked about, um margins and uh if we were willing to share what we're actually making um but i want to save that for the end of the year so i mean we still we're still running and we still have a couple weeks left so um i want to be able to get the most accurate picture of where we're at um both with me being on payroll and me not being on payroll because I think a lot of food truck owners and operators are not putting themselves on payroll and they're just doing distributions out of the uh, business side. You included, yes. Um, so so with me being on payroll, it makes the numbers a little bit different. So my my margin is a true business margin and not necessarily my margin, so... I want, to, I want to gather the numbers. I want to get all my receipts and I want to pull a true number for it because I have to do it anyways. Um, just want to do it towards the end of the year, a little bit closer once. Uh, so look for that information. Um, I'm more than happy to share 
all my stuff. I will share sales numbers, transactions numbers, average checks, um, what our expenses totals were for the year. Um, I will share it all. I have no problem being an open book with that. So um, CPA, you are more than welcome to as well. But we will, you're, I think you muted yourself. Oh, shit. Nope, you're good. You're, I hear you. I, your lips moved and I didn't hear anything for a second. Probably. I said probably. Okay. Um, probably. <laughs> Depends on how good the numbers turn out. <laughs> Don't need Uncle Sam finding out about more things. I just, if I just see a rope swinging in the next video, then I'll know. <laughs> no, it was a great first year. Um, and then I know we talked after the last episode off the air about you uh, going to see a couple things. And I don't know if you want to talk about that at all. Oh, God. I can't remember what I did 20 minutes ago. Um, going to see a couple things. About your five-year plan. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I apologize. I have the memory of a, well, I don't know what. Okay. As a, That's why you have me. 10-second Tom. Um, That's why I'm here to carry the show. Uh, all right. So. I think we covered this in episode probably two or three about where we see ourselves. Like what's our, what's our end goal. Um, I made my wife laugh the other day. Cause I said, I'm looking for a Skippy empire. <laughs> so I, in my little town, it's not so little, it's, it's 50, 60,000 people. Um, there is uh, buildings for lease, rent, sale, pretty much all the time. And I always get it through my head that you may never find something like this again, but then I have to rein myself back in about being, Hey, it's a five-year plan. So don't rush it if you don't have to. So needless to say, uh, the, the two buildings that I called, one was a, a subway that has been empty for a year. Um, and I was thinking about, you know, putting in a fast casual takeout spot or, the other one was a retail spot um, that's been vacant for about a year that I was thinking about putting in my, my five-year goal, which was a retail store. Retail meaning anything barbecue related, um, rubs, sauces, injections, grills, charcoal, wood. You know, you, if, you can, if you can use it barbecuing, then I'd, I'd want to sell it, with the exception of lighter fluid. Not a big fan. Um, and then I was approached by uh somebody um just off an initial conversation stating they may look to sell uh a retail store that they have and going through it i'm thinking okay well there's a brand i don't know if i told you this i probably didn't mm -hmm. um and i won't name the company because i don't think it's official so um there's we didn't talk numbers uh but there's brand and there's inventory and uh, I was told what the sales were and going in my head, I'm thinking, okay, well, I can buy the inventory, you know, whatever they have. So the real cost is, you know, the brand. Um, and logistically, it just wasn't going to work out to where, you know, I wanted to do it. So, and then nobody called me back for the retail spot and the store uh, after two phone calls. So I'm now back to, my now four-year plan will stay a four-year plan unless something absolutely drop dead gorgeous shows up. And then maybe I can, maybe I'll think about it, but I have to be fiscally responsible and make sure that, you know, everything in this brand is safe before I start opening up more brands or more spots. Skippy, I'm so proud of you. Thanks. You are perfect i am so glad you came around all on your own or it was with your wife's help <laughs> it was no it was it was tough it's like you the one thing that's in the back of my head is okay did i do did i do better than i thought i would ever because i was the new guy in town or did i do good because my food's good and people want to come back well, i won't really know that until next year you know and that's i have obviously don't have any bad feedback which is always good mm. but I really want to. I really want to make sure that a a second year goes into it before I start tooting my own horn and say, "Hey, I have the best stuff around." And knowing that I might, you know, 
food trucks pop up all the time, you know, and, and somebody else might open up a barbecue spot. There's a restaurant that's been a barbecue spot for years that's now bringing out a food truck and it is what it is. So, but yeah, that's so four year plan is still a four year plan unless something amazing happens. You were perfect until you said unless. I understand. I, unless it's, let's put it this way. It's, no matter what, I'm not doing anything until the end. I wouldn't do anything until the end of next year. The end of next year has to solidify what I did this year first. Can I, can I give you my, what my intervention speech was going to be? <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> wow. Uh, let me go grab my crack pipe. Anyway, go ahead. Sorry. Please. So this was before I, because I don't know that you, you may have mentioned the retail spot, but I didn't realize that was oh, no, that one was, of the places that you were looking for. So I had pictured them both as being restaurant based. No, just one. Because <laughs> the retail spot, I would have a parking lot for the food truck. And then the goal is to have rotating food trucks to, right. anyway, don't, I don't want to keep talking about it because I want to open one up again. December is a great time to open up first barbecue shop. Anyway, go ahead. <laughs> please, please, <laughs> please. I was almost going to call the mall. I was almost going to call the local mall and see how much rent was. <laughs> anyway, please. Okay. First, almost- first thing, before you get to a brick and mortar, most restaurants go out of business in three years. Absolutely. You're, you're one. I think you need to be three in before you even pull the trigger. Fair enough. Um, so that's that's the first thing. And not, I'm not saying that you're not going to make it, but I, <coughs> you, yeah, I would say you need to hit that milestone of sustainability. Mm-hmm. Exactly. It's, it, are you, is it because you're the new kid in town? Um, I've been to some pretty shit restaurants that had lines around the building for the first three months they were open, you know? Um, yeah. And I'm not saying that's you, but um, yeah, prove sustainability because the last thing you want to do is to stress yourself financially um, and then get yourself in a really bad spot. Yeah. Um, thing number two, and we kind of touched on this just a minute ago. Deuce. You have not had a true business expense year yet. You're Correct. not paying. You're not paying payroll. You're Correct. not doing. You're, I mean, you don't have any of that other stuff yet. Nope. Um, so you need you need time under that umbrella. Um, so you get a real feel for expenses and everything. Um, oh yeah. Those were the two big ones for me. Um, so yeah, I'm glad that you kind of pulled back. A four year plan is a four year plan. Yes, sometimes those can get pushed forward, but I. Enjoy the ride so far, bud. You know, yeah, yeah. Enjoy it's... where you're at, and don't be too quick to grow it too fast. I... For sure. <laughs> I don't know what that was. <laughs> that, <playing>. was <laughs> that was funny. I can't. Yeah, I don't. Um, one's nuts cut off. The other, you know, the just. I don't. I, again, I have to be. I have to be fiscally responsible. That's that's my new phrase for the day for the for the month. Basically, this month is fiscally responsible. You know, I wanted to. My problem is, is I'm I'm I don't want to stay. I went and actually had lunch with another food truck guy who he opened up a store. Um, a piece of pizza guy opened up a store. I think earlier this year, after being in business for six years, and you mean restaurant, right? Yeah, restaurant. Sorry. Okay, I just want because you're now talking about restaurant. And sorry, yeah, sorry. I just want to make sure we're on the same page. A pizza shop. Yeah. Um, and it wasn't a Little Caesars, and they gave him a good deal on it because they wanted to, it's in a gas station. But I had a really good long talk with him. You know, guy's been in the business for a lot longer than me. Like, why did you open up a store? Why Why did you want to do it now? Um, you know, you've been successful from what I understand on your food truck, and he just it was the right time. And that's basically all I can say. It was, for us, it was the right time. It's true family business. I don't think they have a non-family working there. I don't really have a huge family. So it's just me. So yeah, 
knowing that he's like, you have to realize that if you don't have that big family, like I do, you just what you said, you have to worry about payroll. You have to worry about um, figuring out taxes and I got to put yourself on payroll. He's like, I still, after six years, still don't pay myself. Um, and he had a wife or he has a wife that is going through cancer treatments. So it's like plate is like full, <laughs> like real full. Yeah. Um, but he's been, I'd love to have him on the podcast. He's a wealth of knowledge that he's very down to earth. You know, I did a wedding with him one, one time and it's so easy to him because he's been doing it. So it's like any question you have, you know, he's kind of my go-to guy other than you. You're my barbecue go-to guy. He's my just, I guess, business-ish go-to guy. No more than 10 minutes down the road. So I can actually go visit him if I want to. But yeah, Tiki Sam's Pizza. Anyway, yeah, four-year plan, staying a four-year plan. Good. For now. <laughs> <laughs> I did that just right here. Oh, just yeah. Me. I I'm happy that you 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 came around. This is the this is your third year, right? Or the end of your third year? Yeah, third full time year, yep. Yeah. You're still rolling. So I'm so excited about the yeah, yeah. We need to watch the YouTube it. video for that smile. Yeah, we're I mean, yeah, we're still rolling. Um are we stable enough for me to go out and try to take a loan and redo a building? No. I'm not that at that point where I feel that comfortable. Um we are, are stable to take out a loan and go buy another food truck. Yeah. Good for you. Because <laughs> One, the payments are coming off on the one I have now. <laughs> so I know I can maintain the same payment schedule. You know, I know there's enough in the business to be able to do that. So, um, sure. so yeah, that part makes me feel comfortable. But when you get into, I love how you're just staring at them like they're going to do anything. <laughs> You're piercing their soul right now. <laughs> well, I'm just making sure they're not drawing blood on each other. Yeah. One of them has to go to the vet next week, and I'd rather him not be all scarred and like I've been fighting him. <laughs> sorry, sorry, vet. He's a rescue. Yeah, just found him on the just side of the road. Him. I think someone threw him out of a, a truck on the highway. <laughs> just rescued him from his brother last night. <laughs> yeah. Every other day in between. Um, I mean, we. I mean, we went and talked to Kyle. We did. I mean, how much money did he dump into that subway? That was only a couple years old. I mean, it's a, that was a new building, but to get it to where you have it for, hey, get out of there. Sorry, everybody. I'm sure that came through awfully loud. <laughs> Visual was um, better. Yeah, what do, you, what do you say he paid for his hood? 100000 Yeah, but that's... I was really thinking about that. I don't, unless that included all the equipment underneath it. I don't know. Well, keep in mind it's a little bit different for a truck than an, or a food truck than it well, is. I um, yeah, I imagine the the air handler above is a little bit heavier duty, and I mean all that, but but I imagine most yeah. of it's labor too. But he's got, he's got the two smokers that are you know twenty and forty thousand too. So I mean that's, yeah. and I'm proud those of them for you know those two smokers are also feeding the brick and mortar plus two food trucks. Oh, is that so what I imagine he needs the capacity. I just figured he was still using the ones that were on the food trucks. No, he said everything gets cooked there and then moved on to the trailers. It's good to have a building. It's good to have a building, um, which is exactly what I want to do with my building. I want to cook yeah. everything there and just move it on to the trailers and then off we go. Um, so, yeah, I mean, there's the, the, the expense to outfit a commercial kitchen and the get things ready is, I mean, three times what it's going to cost me to get another truck. Yeah. Easy. Three times. So um, that's where I'm patient. Um, there is an Arby's near me that is not going to be an Arby's very much longer. Uh, the building's going on the market in two more months and the rent's not bad. <laughs> what they're asking for lease payments are, is like three grand. Which isn't bad. <laughs> I'm thinking like a few hundred. Like I'm thinking like less than a grand. Oh, that must be a, For a monthly lease on a building. 
You can't buy a one bedroom studio apartment for a thousand dollars a month. <laughs> I never got the calls back, so I don't know what they are. <laughs> At least on this side of the state where things are good. Yeah. There's rent controlled. They just announced a new rent controlled apartment building downtown Grand Rapids, and people are losing their shit because a one bedroom studio is eleven hundred dollars. Oh boy. Well, I yeah, you're not going to get a commercial building for less than a thousand dollars a month. Like I said, I never got unless the you go to Flint. <laughs> then you're gonna have some water issues. Well, and that's the thing is, I'm kind of, I do believe. I'm a firm believer of everything happens for a reason. So if I didn't get a call back from either place, then there definitely was a reason. Yeah. But anyway. Yeah. So, well, yeah, I, there's a, an old famous day is near me that got converted to a, some other wing barbecue place and they just closed for good a couple months ago. So I'm waiting to see that <laughs> building go on the market and see how much they're going to charge for that. But it's in the heart of Granville, next to the one of the bigger malls in the state, and it's going to be expensive. I it's remember going that to be a millions dollar lot in building. Yeah, and no one's giving me a loan for that. So, <laughs> um, so yeah, I am. I'm. I'm patiently waiting for a collapse of the market. And if it's anything like the last collapse, it's not going to be a total collapse on the side of the state, but it'll definitely be more palatable. So, yeah, just that's kind of where I'm at. Um, it's coming. Um, at least, if not a full collapse, at least a return to reality on real estate prices. Um, there's more houses for sale now than I've seen in years. In a couple yeah, of there's no more bidding wars. So there's most no. people are instead of getting over asking, they're either getting at or just under. Yeah, there's no there's no more accepting offers until Friday. Yeah. <laughs> the notices. So um yeah, I, I I'm okay being patient and I, I'll be happy to run a second truck. I mean, even me running a second truck is gonna cost me improvements to my house because I'm gonna have to I have to upgrade my panel to get another another 50 amp. Uh, plug in there so i'm going from i'll have to go from 100 amp service to 200 amp service and i mean which is thousands of dollars yeah. you know, nothing's effing cheap nope. especially right now so. yeah true five-year plans are staying five-year plans <laughs> dude I, like i said i my original outlook was to have a second truck by year three which would have been this year. Um, yeah. But I opened at the worst possible time you can open anything. And that's uh, yeah. global recession and pandemic. Um, yeah. So yeah, my, my outlook has shifted a little bit, but we are definitely close. Um, I am definitely close to pulling the trigger. So um, vehicle yeah, prices, vehicle prices are starting to come back down, which is great news. Um, Cause I'll need a second truck to pull a second trailer. Um And uh, so, yeah, it's a, I mean, things are starting to look better and economically for me to get there. But um, right now for the first three years, I mean, there's been a little bit of robbing Peter to pay Paul type of scenarios where you're taking your, I uh, have a, a personal loan to help pay some other things through the winter. And, you know, it's, we're getting there though. I mean, the trailer getting paid off is, is a good thing. And we were pretty close, I think, to being, profitable even with my salary this year so and we had a lot of unexpected expense um oh yeah we had we had a long problem with <laughs> brakes and tires for a while um generator issues um yeah it seemed like we were always doing something on the trailer for a month and a half there and it it's it almost always seems like it's july when it's our slowest month of the year um yeah, it's weird. I, mm -hmm. It's always fun when you see the bank account go down and never <laughs> rebound a little bit day after day. Uh, yeah. yeah. Where's that? <sighs> so, yeah, we got that out of the way. Thanks. 
now on to the other conversation. Um, oh, which one now? Let's go to let's go to menu. Oh, yeah. And uh, I'm gonna, when he's talking about prices, I'm going to assume he's talking about how we determine how to set prices. <laughs> Would be my guess. Well, between you and I, we could talk about prices. We could talk about portions. <laughs> we could talk about. Uh, there's a lot of differences between you and I. Our prices are pretty similar, but our portion sizes are different. Well, how did you determine your price for? So let's go. Let's go like like. You have a. You have a basic pork sandwich, right? Yeah. Just pork pickles and a bun. Yep. Okay. So I started that one off at eight dollars. And it was a third pound. No, it was a quarter pound. And then I upped it to nine about uh, two months into it because pork just kept going up in price. And it was a, now it's a third pound. So I'm actually giving more, even though it's uh, just to try to, I think that's one, that's one that I call a, not a loss leader, but not making it as much as other things. Um, I should have had this already set. I have a spreadsheet of, of how much it cost me to make something. So you don't if, have an what's that? You have an active one. I have an, an active one. Yeah. That is something else I need to redo this year because I had one. I, I think I even sent it to you before. Yeah, you, you used it for first, I don't know, four or five months. I lost it. I have no idea where it went. <laughs> I could probably send it to you. But if you still have my email, <laughs> send it back yeah, to you. <laughs> I do. Um, uh, what I did was I kind of took – there's really no rhyme or reason. I'll just come out with that. There's really not a lot of rhyme or reason. I kind of looked at other what other food trucks were charging, what local restaurants were charging for just a basic pulled pork sandwich, and I came somewhere in the middle. There's uh, people out there that are all the way up to 11 to 12 bucks. There's people that don't have a basic pulled pork sandwich and then throw coleslaw on it and call it a pulled pork sandwich. So I just, I looked at all, all the things I wanted to be on my menu and then really just looked at the prices from everybody else and just tried to be competitive. It's kind of the easiest way to go. So, um, with the exception of ribs. Those so we can, we're only talking, I mean, we're both barbecue trucks and that's kind of where our experience is going to come from. Um, going through well, being competitors. Panini. What's that? You're a panini truck too. Where'd you, yeah, that's I, what that was. The prices on those, <laughs> there was zero, zero work put into those. And it was, yeah, it was very much the same thing where what is, what are other people charging for these types of sandwiches? And we're, we'll just go from there. Um, yeah. I kind of loosely threw in what I knew my serving size or cost per serving was um, just to make sure that we were clearing that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I per, I would say per sandwich, we're probably, I don't know. Our cost per sandwich is higher on the panini side than it is on the barbecue side. I think. The, at the end of the day, the goal the goal is to figure out how much it costs you and then like three times your cost. I mean, that's, that's the rough guideline. That's, but That's where I was going to go. I mean, when we were doing competitive barbecue and all those people selling leftover shit on the side and we'd get asked for these random one-off open houses and stuff. And everybody's like, well, how much do you charge for stuff? And it's, it's cost times three is what we've always done for barbecue. Um, it's, well, and it's good. It's a good way to start out, you know, but it's also, you have to figure out, the other thing is figure out your portion sizes for whatever you're giving away. Right. And then and how are you going to control those portion sizes? There's somebody that uses, uh, since it's me that's running the truck most of the time, I kind of switch between using my handful and using a scoop. But it ends <laughs> up being, I've actually measured it, actually I'm being the same size. Um, it's nice it's, that your hand is at four ounce ladle. <laughs> uh, now, now it's a six or five and a half ounce ladle. ladle. That's a good size. <laughs> anyway. Um, yeah. And, you know, your, my mac and cheese take it costs, you know, 13 bucks. And I know that if I do a full pan, I can get 
basically like 25 to 30 orders out of it. So I know that's different for you because you do half pans. You do a lot of them, but so it's just cost times three, figure out what it costs you. And it's a good starting point. I am uh, sorry, I'm trying to do this real quick. Again, I should have had this all ready too. Um, so I just did my basic pork sandwich, did the, the breakdown of costs. So for our bun, it's a 15 cents, give or take a couple pennies. Um, barbecue sauce, another 15 cents. A pickle, add a nickel. A pickle, add a nickel. <laughs> and that's probably high. But we do two pickles to a sandwich, so um, I think we're probably okay there. Um, and then I guess, pork. But how many pickles come in a container yet? No. <laughs> I'll, I'll give that test to Chris when we open back up. Please, please. I please need make you, a video. You count all video the pickles again. in a case of pickles and then divide it so we have an average number of pickles per jar. Yes. <laughs> you got to tell him, hey, we got to start being more. It's year four. We got to start being more professional. That's right. We need to count every single pickle. <laughs> I need a full inventory at the end of every day. Um, and then pork. And this is where I think people need to really – really spend the most time on this calculation um, because you need to factor, factor, factor in loss, factor in the, your, your product loss from cooking, which I know on pork, it's not half, but it's close. Um, uh, I do, but I, I average mine about 60% or like 60% yield. Yeah. So I do half just so I have cushion. Um, yeah. And that way, and that way, when I do catering and stuff, and I use the same math, we usually have a little bit of extra, yep. and I'm fine with that. And that's all built into what we charge. So, yeah, we're a little bit over three times cost on it. But anyways, yeah. um, so it's not only that; it's your the charcoal to smoke, yep. um, which I know is hard to do for a single pork butt because you're cooking multiple pork butts, multiple briskets. How do you break that up over blah 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 blah? So for me, it's about 30 bucks. No, about $20 in fuel to do a full cook. So then I go to our average, average cook of number of meats and things. And I'm down to four or six, I don't know, 250 a, a item. You're at, you have overhead though, too. What do you mean? Does your, does your overhead go into that? What overhead? Uh, cost of trailer cost of insurance cost of employees cost of anything like that or is that just a separate I, category that's separate right now yeah because we're just talking food costs so we can just yeah, yeah just trying to get a handle on pure food costs yeah um but yeah don't let me forget that next part because that'll be in my spreadsheet for the next years now that i have three full-time years of mostly good bookkeeping um and properly paid people <laughs> um so yeah so you're you add in another two dollars onto that pork butt plus the pan which is another right now 50 cents Jesus. 50 to uh, 50 cents to a dollar depending on how you're buying them or where you're buying them um so you're so if you're at let's say because it's a nice even number two dollars a pound raw you're going to lose half, which brings that usable meat to $4 a pound before you do anything with it. Yep. So you're at $4 a pound. Um, and then, yeah, you, so you, then you Victor, Victor, God, why do I keep saying Victor? Wow. You're, you're Victor. <laughs> I am Victoring this up. Um, Victor. So you figure about $4, four pound, four to five pounds for a pork butt. We'll go four on the low end just to bump up our cost per <coughs> pound. Um, so where were we at? $4 a pound. Is it what I said? Yeah. Four. Um, before that, and then you got rubs. So figure in another 25 cents per pound. Um, that pan's going to be about 25 to let's say 25 cents a pound. Your charcoal is about 50 cents a pound. Um, so all of a sudden now you're at $6 a pound. Give or take. 
Um, so you have $6 a pound. And then for us, it's a quarter pound serving per sandwich. So now you're at $1.50 per sandwich as your pork cost. $6 divided by four for, for the four servings. So, so really, I mean, people are like, how can you charge six or twelve dollars a pound? I'm like, it's costing me seven. <laughs> you know, yeah. no, that's before, that's before I pay anybody or the trailer or all that yeah. other stuff I'm talking about. Um, on interrupt on, on the flip side is if you're thinking about instead of running a food truck, you're catering. A lot of a lot of times you really got to factor in your time. You know, what's what's your time worth? And I think that's why. I like saw catering prices for a local barbecue spot, and I'm like, huh? How are you? Yeah, it's hard like, for how because it's so much inactive 30, time. <laughs> yeah, it's like how how are you charging thirty three dollars a pound for brisket? Yeah, like, I mean to me that's uh, whatever people pay it obviously, or else they wouldn't have it on the menu. I mean, I know I know one of our friends uh, does that and charges that amount, but he's also selling Snake River Golds and Blacks, so. True. So it's a higher quality meat. Yeah. Um, so yeah, anyway, so back to I'm at a dollar eighty-five cost on a piglet sandwich. And that's a normal hamburger bun. That's not even a brioche, is it? Yep. So that's just normal hamburger bun. So and then we charge seven and a quarter for that. Yeah. So I'm not sure what we're over three times, but yeah, but that's that's as rough math as rough math can be. Yeah, and that, I mean that, and that's again without any of the other expenses. That's pure just food cost. Yeah, I think if you start off with knowing knowing your audience and knowing, I think really knowing what's around you. Some people are going to say that that's not. I'll get as as one of my favorite podcasts say, I'll get hate tweets for this, but um, I do think it's important to know your know your audience, know your area. You know, when I first started, are you referring to economic demographics? No, well, know your area, like know what, like you being in Grand Rapids, right, or outside of Grand Rapids, whatever. Um, could you charge more for your sandwiches? The answer to that's probably yes. Okay, I mean, realistically, um, yes, I. Could. Or, or could you cut your portion sizes down and charge the same? The answer to that, that's probably yes. Yep, but. I like what you do. It's value. It's perceived value is what's what you're doing. I do it kind of a different way where I'm looking at what other people, other food trucks that are around me are selling their stuff for. And I just, at the end of the day, I just want to be competitive. Am I going to, I started this when meat was at its all time high and, you know, fuels at its all time high. That could be another discussion, but anyway. Um, <laughs> however, I am seeing prices go down. I'm seeing meat prices go down, but we're seeing disposable prices go up. And it's so at the end of the day, there, I've had somebody ask me, well, how come you're charging so much for this? I said, it's not necessarily just the meat. It's what goes into everything. You know, everything else is going up. Even the container that I put your, you know, put your sandwich in went up 50 cents. You know, and it might not seem like a lot, but when you go to buy 100 of them, you know, that, that's where a lot of dollars come in. So the other thing is you didn't take into consideration what container you're putting it in, too. Yep. It's going to be, you know. Yeah, it's again, yeah. I mean, we talked, yeah, all very rough without everything. Yeah. So um, I, I look at I look at the area that I'm in. Um, I have an, uh, an example. So yesterday in the food truck, there's a food truck training group on Facebook. And somebody said that they're in Michigan looking to start up a, a barbecue food truck. And I think you and I both posted about, hey, we talk about this. Give us a listen. Yep. One of our local barbecue guys, uh, who's been doing it for a little while, but had some, we don't necessarily think eye to eye, saying, <laughs> hey, there's there's a lot of barbecue food trucks around. Are you sure that's what you want to open? Yep, I saw that same comment. It, it's too saturated. Without even knowing where the guy's from, just saying, you know, he finally said where he was from. And then somebody else chimed in and said, hey, there's like four or five trucks in that area. You know, where I live, you know, I go from Jackson to Ann Arbor. There's barbecue galore in Ann Arbor. I mean, there's Famous Dave's. There's a restaurant downtown. There's three food trucks that I know of. You know, here in Jackson, there's there's two restaurants. 
And you know, the owner of a third restaurant just passed away at his shop doing his books. Makes me feel like I'm going to pass away at my house doing my books. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> like if you're going to go, I don't want to go that way. Um, I don't, uh, somebody told me in the beginning, there's, there's more than enough money out there. There's more than enough money. If, if a barbecue food truck is what you want to do, then put your heart and soul into it and get after it. If don't let anybody, like, realistically, don't let anybody tell you anything different. You're going to be the one that finds out if it's worth it or not, not anybody else. And there could just be a lot of people that are out there that are saying, well, now I got more competition. Well, make better food. At the end of the day, if you're worried about competition, make better food or do something different. You, you can only sell, you know, you can, I, so many barbecue trucks out there just do dinners, you know, sliced brisket with two sides or, you know, mm -hmm. a mound of pulled pork with two sides. Um, I did model my menu after yours because it's different. It's sandwiches. People, people love things with, you know, that they can grab. It's not necessarily about always using a fork. You know, <laughs> the, the, Meyer, the, the Meyer and Mixon line out there. People, People like think, food with a handle. <laughs> exactly. But I, at the end of the day, be different. If you're going to do, be a barbecue food truck, look at the other barbecue trucks around there and be different. One of our, one of our fans, one of our listeners, um, Twisted Smoke, has Asian style ribs. Like I want to go try them just because they're Asian style ribs, you know. Um, but it's 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 just different. I love different. I think that's. I think that's why if you're successful, it's because you're, you're different. You're not necessarily the same thing. If you are the same thing as everybody else, I do believe your product has to be superior to everybody else. You can't just, you know, be running by the skin of your teeth and hoping the stuff that comes out is you know the best in the world. Yeah. You know, actually, you know, make sure, you know, you were talking about the guy that uses high quality meats. Well, you know what? He knows how to cook those high quality meats. And he can charge what he wants to for those high quality meats because nobody else is doing that. So that's what makes him different. You know? Um, yeah. There's so many, so many same things. It's always good to be different. How did you get there? Are you talking about prices? Yeah. Well, <laughs> I know when you're, kind of, it kind of goes into it. Uh, yeah. It was a rant. I'm sorry. But, well, that's fine. And the second part of it was menus and how do you determine your menu? And um, well, there you go. Damn it. Oh yeah, it, it ties in. Um, there are a lot of barbecue food trucks, and it seems to be the barbecue the the food truck of choice right now. Um, between that and tacos, um, it seems like every truck that opens is either a taco truck or a barbecue truck. Um, just because another one opens doesn't mean they're taking money, and they're not taking money. If you view it that way, then you're coming from a place of lack. Um, and it is a very abundant atmosphere out there. Um, not everybody likes my barbecue. I don't like everybody else's barbecue. Um, there is a style for everybody and enough people that probably like that style to uh, make a business around. Um, Absolutely. These other people are coming from a place of, of lack and are probably seeing a decline in business and are worried about more uh, competition in the area. So. Yeah, I think so. Um, you brought up... Uh, the uh, what was the name of the place that you just said? Twisted Smoke. Yeah, I thought there was another one. Oh, you the Asian ribs. Uh, yeah. For whatever reason, that made me think of a uh, restaurant sign that I drove by last night, and I thought that the placement of the words was interesting because the way I read the sign <laughs> was from top to bottom. <laughs> so the first word is big in the middle, and then a top word and a bottom word. Okay. So a name in the middle, and then the, the style of restaurant. Oh boy. I read it from top to bottom and got me curious. <sighs> Let me share my screen. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, I got to see this. Uh, oh. What is a Mexican BJ? <laughs> Jesus H. <laughs> you know, the best thing about them? You can get them to go. <laughs> Wow. I saw that driving down the road. I was like, what the fuck is that? And then my brain caught up and I was like, oh, it's BJ's Mexican restaurant, not Mexican BJ's restaurant. Oh, Lord have mercy. Which of that place is busy. <laughs> wow. 
where they get the talent for that um <laughs> <laughs> um so okay anyways let's go back to um how we determined menus uh and this will probably wrap us up close to the for the day um for me it was um i started my menu was so much smaller than it is now i think i had three maybe four sandwiches um a loaded mac and cheese we only had pork loaded mac and cheese um didn't have a brisket mac and cheese we had the piglet i think we had the piglet the lord of swine and the heifer was it i think we had the three sandwiches when we started um meat by the pound then that loaded mac um from there, everything we added, we already had the items on the truck. Mm -hmm. So it was, how can we manipulate what we have to create new menu items so we're not creating more overhead and we're just figuring out different ways to move what we have. Um, mm -hmm. So that's how my whole menu got created. And now the menu is huge, um, <laughs> probably <laughs> bigger than most food truck menus. Um I think mine, oh, mine are, mine are, mine's very similar to yours. Your, yours keeps growing too. <laughs> it does not. I run specials. That's it. Yeah. So that's how my menu started. I started with four sandwiches and both loaded mac and cheeses. Um, and it was two brisket sandwiches. It was a pulled pork and a pulled pork with coleslaw on it. Is a pork sandwiches. And then um, I used to work at a barbecue restaurant that had this sandwich on it. Uh, I loved it. So I put it on my, and it was one of our top sellers for a long time. And then I would just run specials. Like any type of sandwich that I already had or the ingredients for, just like you said, mm -hmm. I put it on the menu. If they sold, great. We'll see how long they sell for. Um, I put that peanut butter one on there because you got one too. Yep. And the first day I put it on there, I think I sold know, 10 of them, 11 of them. I'm like, okay, all right, let's try it again. You know, yeah, I had to add peanut butter, but yeah. The other thing is, is with that sandwich. So the people always, uh, when it comes to your menu, you got to be known for something. You know, you have to be. I have a burger truck friend of mine that that has been trying everything he possibly can to put hot dogs on there. I'm like, are you a burger truck or are you a hot dog truck? Figure it out. <laughs> you're passing along my advice. <laughs> Damn it. I am. I am passing on your advice. Yes. Um, Is that you or me? Uh, the, what? It wasn't me. The the chimes? It wasn't me. I put my phone on silent like a good boy. Well, it sounds like it's coming from my... Lab. I don't know what the fuck is making. Anyway, sorry. Boy. You're going to have a lot of editing today or tomorrow or whenever you do it. Anyway, so when I was talking to the pizza guy, he was like, you know what? I can't wait till he can figure out how to do pizzas on his grill because <laughs> he just adds stuff all the time this guy has gone through eight different menus in all year so far and prices are changing and it's like people come to your truck one week you change your menu up the next week and something that you had is not there anymore or something that you had is more expensive like how can you justify that to people you know and they're like well he's like people just pay it i'm like well okay I'm like, okay, you gotta do what you gotta do, bud. Okay. And I think we talked about that a little bit about adjusting prices depending on location. And yeah, that's the exact thing that I wanted to avoid because we have customers that follow us around the city of Grand Rapids. Yeah. Two and I, I people are effing nuts. The amount people have driven an hour and a half to come get food from us. I've had the same. Yeah. Which is crazy. And it's super flattering. And I'm super grateful for these people. But y'all nuts. Um, <laughs> I don't know if I, I don't want them to drive an hour and a half. <laughs> if we're in a more affluent area and all of a sudden something they get two dollars more, you know, yeah. and they're like, what the yeah, fuck? Exactly. Well, when we're yeah. in your poor town, <laughs> we lower the prices. <laughs> well, I, I made the mistake when I first started was somebody messaged me about catering. And I said, you know, I, I can accommodate any budget. Or he's like, send me your catering menu. I'm like, well, Give me an idea of what you want. I can accommodate any budget. And he was like, oh, so depending on how much I, or what I want is what the cost is going to be. You'll, you'll adjust the cost that way. I said, well, I mean, realistically, yeah. I mean, that's the, that's how catering works is I'm going to adjust the cost to whatever you want. Well, why don't you just have a menu? 
I'm like, because I tailor everything to each individual person. And he couldn't, the guy just couldn't understand. It's like writing me mean, mean things like, oh, you're just, you're, you're not good at your business. And I'm like, but well, I don't know. What to tell you. I'm trying to, trying to help you out here. But what do you, you don't have a base price per person for pork? I do. I do. I do now. Okay. I didn't that. That was when I first started. Okay. Yeah. I was like, I've, yeah, I'd I've, be super confused by that too. <laughs> it was, no, I actually didn't start off. I didn't do per person stuff I did because mm-hmm. I, I always had an issue with figuring out how much to cook per person. And it was how much do you charge per person? Like how, what, if they're going to do a buffet style, how do I make sure that they only take however much I cook, you know? So I've gotten, I'm going to say, I can't say a lot better, but I've gotten better at it. I could have made a lot more money this year in catering than I did uh, because of how I decided to price things out. And that's my own fault, but I know not to do it next year. Boy, I got, I got fucked hard on a couple of catering jobs in 2021. Um, well, that I, so you quote and you'd take deposits. And I never had it built in that prices may change depending on market prices. Yeah. So what they were quoted was what I was going to charge them. And that was the year that shit went super crazy Uh um, meat prices. And there was a couple, there was a couple catering events for a couple hundred people that I think I broke even on just because of the cost of meat doubled or tripled. Um, So yeah, now, I mean, and we had some people say, Hey, we're noticing meat prices go up. Or people ask now if we have another surge in meat prices, does that affect the quote? Um, so I'm pretty honest with them that you know we try to absorb as what as much as we can. But yes, if we see a triple in yeah. brisket prices, you will see a change in your price. And that's that your yeah. price is not going to triple. And I try to keep people, I mean, you're not going to go from eight dollars a person to twenty-four dollars a person. Yeah. But it may go to nine <laughs> yeah you, you'll see a more likely you'll see it i like on the bottom of my menu bottom of the catering menu is subject to you know prices subject to change with global market fluctuations um back to back to where we were ranting the first time um i don't even remember which thing that was <laughs> no when it comes to your yeah when it comes to your menu uh and setting up a menu be different just be different don't do the same thing be different you can still do dinners if that's what you want to do. Just make sure that the best dinners anybody can get. And, you know, so look at the barbecue restaurants you're around saying you. be different. You don't mean be crazy. No, you be creative. A, you don't need a cotton candy pork sandwich. You just need to be different than what other people are selling. Well, Mark Rasmussen did that. It was pretty good. I, anyway. <laughs> it was a joke for a year and a half, well, two I years. Know. But, you know, I mean, you don't need to do something like that. No, but yes, yeah, look at what other people are selling and see whether you can squeeze in something niche. If no one's doing beef ribs and you can cook a hell of a beef rib, do beef ribs. But but don't take a hit on it. Sell it. Sell it for what? Like beef ribs are expensive. They're like four, I think four to five dollars a pound, and you only get three of them. So make sure that whatever you're whatever you're cooking, you're charging enough to a make money on it, but. You're not, you're not taking a loss. You're not, you're not just, if, if the one beef rib is, you know, 10 bucks to cook, you better be selling that thing for $30 or more. Is there, is there no burnt brisket burnt ends in your area that are any sure. good? Is there, is there a niche there for you? Is there, you know, is, is there a, a non-traditional meat that you can highlight um, or a non-traditional? Do have, yeah. Do you have a fryer? Can you cook? Can you smoke wings? And then, can you fry them to first service? You know, yeah. do you have everybody sells, you know, not everybody, but most people that have a fryer sell fries. How much does it cost more to do hand cut fries? You know, what does it take to do your, make your process, uh, your flow still okay? You know, still, I can run my truck myself. I know you, you need an employee because you're, I can. <laughs> I don't want to. <laughs> I, it, I can. It stresses me out. And I know it doesn't provide the best experience for our customers. So yeah. We try to avoid that at all costs. So, but if you have a smaller trailer and you figure out, okay, can you run it yourself? Can you not? Mm-hmm. You know, do you actually need somebody? You know, there's, you'll find out that once, once friends want to, you know, do something together, 
once it's time to actually do it, you'll find out who your friends are. <laughs> People that actually want to get in the trenches with you. Yeah. But yeah, going back, be creative with your menu. Be creative. So, and the, the being different part is the whole reason why we didn't do the barbecue parfait. I, I was going to say, oh, I had that in my head. I hate the barbecue parfait. Because everybody's doing it. Yeah. And then we got it. I still get asked. Hey, I saw this one thing at a, had like mashed potatoes and beans and so, yep, we don't do it. <laughs> yeah, it's. Nope. I have these other options that are just as good or better. Yeah. For the same price, and you're going to get twice as much food. <laughs> yeah, I don't. And, and that's what I see. I see it as a novelty item that people charge an ungodly premium for, yeah. for such a small amount of food that looks bigger because of the vessel that it's in. Yeah, it's a it's a parfait Sunday cup. It's got a you know thin it's cylinder tall. and. Then- and yeah. super skinny. <laughs> yeah, I personally I can't I can't stand them. I tried them one time on my I don't know, third or fourth event because there was a bunch of kids. And I'm like, oh, well, I figured they'll like it. Yeah, so two because I couldn't explain it right. I even drew I even drew something and said, this is where the layers are, you know. And it was like no. And I know somebody that makes their living off of parfaits. And Robinson. What's that? Robinson. No, he, yeah, he's he, by him too. He vents twice a year now. He's old. Uh, no, uh, God smoke. That's what they do. Yep, that's that. They're bread and butter, and I pre. That's fine. It works for yeah. you. I want somebody to come to my. So the reason I did my menu the way it is, I want somebody to come to my menu and get fourteen different things. You know, they can. They can. They don't have to get the same thing. If they like the same thing, great. They can at least try something else. Yeah, and if you make if you make your living off of that one thing, and that's what one thing you're noted you noticed for, I, why do you have everything else on your menu? So yeah. that one thing, you know. So sorry. we definitely have things that people come for. Like we have regular customers that only come when we run a certain special. Yeah, I do too. And that's fine. And I'm great. I'm glad you're coming. I'm glad that that's what got you there, and that's why you come back. Yep. Yeah. Lady who comes for nachos whenever I'm in a certain certain spot and i hate doing nachos <laughs> i can't <Yeah>. stand them <laughs> but <clears throat> she gets your four, she gets four orders for her and her family and i'm like okay i will always have them when i come here yeah so yeah there we go i think we're at the, we're gonna we're gonna call it there i think that sounds like a good idea i'm tired <sighs> Thank you. How how are you doing on your likes? Real quick, how are you doing on your likes? I'm at 95.69, so I got another 4.31 to go. I'm at... uh, um, Yes! I'm at 15.35. But I'm not running any ads for the rest of the month, so whatever. You run your ads all you want. I will. Build my I, know you. Um, I, I do want to I do want to know what the hell's going on with the MM, MMFT Facebook page and the uh, clientele that we're uh, grabbing. <laughs> I love it. No, I love it. I okay. love it. I freaking love it. I just want to know where they're coming from. Uh, the other side of the world. And I know that that they're those are good. So here's the difference. You want good likes. Yeah. And from what I can tell is these are good likes because I wake up in the morning and I check our podcast stats and we're getting overnight listens. Yeah. Okay. That makes which sense. is likely to be from the other side of the planet when it's daylight over there. Hey, they, they, a lot of, a lot of countries over there invented street food. So I'm cool with that. Yeah. I mean, we didn't used to get, I mean, every once in a while we'd get one or two overnight, but yeah. now it's consistently that we're getting five to 10 overnight. Um, so, not to not to sound overly bad, but do we, is there translation services already hooked up to certain things? I have no idea. Oh. Um, I know in YouTube video they have options for like we put the native language in when I do videos. Um, okay. I'm sure YouTube does some sort of translation or at least into uh, closed caption translation type stuff. Um, I'm not I sure. Wanna, about the podcast. I, I want to hear my my voice in another language. I think it'd be funny. <laughs> <laughs> uh that would be good um 
but yeah, the uh, yeah the podcast Facebook page we're over two hundred now. Um, that one might get to a thousand before you get to two thousand. God um, bless it, man. <laughs> oh well, whatever. No, it's a good thing though. Um, I'll talk to you about a couple of things off the air. Um, but yeah, it's uh, last week was a phenomenal week for the podcast. We it was uh, by far the most downloaded week. Uh, we peaked at seventy six, I think, on the Apple uh, charts for food uh, food podcasts. Uh, we're better than half of those. Maybe <laughs> um, that's purely based on number of listens only on Apple. So. Um, okay which is like our fifth is fifth on our list for number of downloads. So most people are iHeartRadio, Spreaker directly and audible and like, then it's Apple. So really yeah, it I, wouldn't be hard for us to get to the top 20. I don't think if we had more people listening via Apple, but um, as far as I can tell, I can't find charts anywhere else. At least, Apple. at least the other ones don't have a food category. So we get lumped into I'm not sure which categories. Miscellaneous, probably. Everything, everything that doesn't have categories lumped into miscellaneous. Well, if there was one of those, I would look there. Um, <laughs> I've looked into culture and other things like, so, um, yeah. But it's growing and we're happy about it. And um, yep, absolutely, a start for uh, this little measly rambling podcast. Um, yes, rambling. Rambling it is. Uh, anyways, on our Facebook at Monday Morning Food Truck, MMFT Guys on Facebook and uh, YouTube, you can just do a simple Google search for me at Sweet Racks and Smoke and Butts Barbecue to find all my social stuff and Skippy at PBMJs uh, Michigan. PBMJs of Michigan. Bingo, yeah. bango. Uh, we will be back uh, next week, Monday um, I think with the way the holiday falls, we shouldn't have to take a, a week off at all. So we should have a new episode every week for the rest of the year. Um, we have more great stuff coming for you guys in the next couple of weeks uh, with end of the year stuff and um, all that nuts and bolts financial stuff that you guys are so craving, apparently. So um, yeah, have a good week. More, we will talk to you more, one more time, I think, before Christmas. Apologies. More questions. Ask more questions. We love questions. Yes. Otherwise, you guys get our ramblings on shows like Yellowstone and Walking Dead, which I am on season five, by the way. Finally. I thought there was more seasons than five. I thought there was seven. So I got really confused when Paramount stopped me at the end of season four. I was like, oh, is there no more episodes? <sighs> this one's kind of, this, this year's kind of slow so far. So, yeah, it's okay. You can only have so much murder before people start catching on. Okay. see this is what you get if you guys don't ask questions all right guys thanks a lot <laughs> see you skippy have a good one Bye. <laughs>